It's literally like water. Oh God, oh God. My head is beaming. <laughs> well, this is a mess. Are you kidding me? Hello, welcome back. Whenever I say welcome back in the start of my videos, I've just realized if you're new here and you've never seen my face before, then Welcome, hopefully you stick around. Today's video is gonna be a full face of me testing drugstore makeup that is new. You probably kind of guessed that from the title. I have got stuff here from Lottie London, Barry M, L'Oreal, NYX, Revolution, LA Girl, Revlon. There's quite a good range of brands here and I think I'm just gonna get into it without waffling any longer. If you wanna see more specifically drugstore videos, give this a thumbs up and I will definitely do more of them. Let's just get started because I wanna put some makeup on this face. Actually, most of the stuff that is in this video I was very kindly sent by these brands in PR packages. There are a couple of bits that I did by myself, but um, none of this video is sponsored and you guys know that I will be honest, even if that's being a bit negative. I'm starting off with um, a bit of skincare just because I'm really interested to try this. This is the L'Oreal Revitalift Laser Renew SPF 20. Whoa, that's really thick. I mean, to be honest, on the side of the thing, it says that the uh, targeted age is between 40 and 60. I'm not sure how old L'Oreal think I am. I am, in fact, 23. <laughs> um, but this says that it refirms, refines, and shields, so I just kind of liked the fact it had SPF in. Ooh. It doesn't really smell too strongly. Just kind of smells fresh, which I quite like, because sometimes L'Oreal uh, products are very, like, fragranced. This one's not too bad, though. Ooh. That actually feels really nice. It doesn't feel too thick. It definitely is a little bit um, oily, but not as oily as a lot of other SPFs I've tried, to be honest. It feels like a nice hydrating cream. My skin looks very kind of plump and shiny. <gasps> oh my. This just slipped out of my hands and nearly went on the floor. That is a glass bottle and I literally caught it like this. <sighs> you will be pleased to know in my new house, my filming room, it's gonna have carpet. So if I do drop stuff, actually maybe that's a bad thing. If I do drop stuff, it's probably gonna stay in the carpet, but at least it won't break. Um, anyway, this is the L'Oreal Revitalift Filler Hyaluronic Acid. It's basically just 1.5% hyaluronic acid serum. That's what it says on it. I know that loads of brands uh, do sell hyaluronic acid, like Revolution, The Ordinary, Beauty Bay have now got one. I am actually really enjoying Beauty Bay's hyaluronic acid and also the vitamin C serum. Ooh, this feels nice. I'm actually yet to find a hyaluronic acid product that I don't like. It's got a little bit of a tacky sort of element to it, but I mean, yeah, that feels nice. Oh, what is that? Feels nice, feels like it's sunk in. I think my skin looks pretty healthy. Moving on to my actual makeup primer. I've got two different glass skin ranges here. I've got NYX's new high glass range, and I've got Revolution's new glass skin range. I was testing this one out on my hand the other day, um, just when it arrived. This is Revolution's Glass Skin Primer. However, I have to be completely honest, I put a bit of this on the back of my hand. It comes in a nice glass bottle. Ooh. ASMR. I like a glass bottle because you can recycle it. We all know that I absolutely love Revolution, but this primer feels like straight up oil. Like, it also smells like an, exactly the same as an oil that I put on my hair. And no matter how much you kind of rub it in, it just doesn't like rub in. So I would only really recommend their Glass Skin Primer, Ultimate Dewy Finish Primer, if you've got dry skin. However, they also have another one which is called the Glass Liquid Skin Illuminating Primer. Packaging is really cool. This one I think is water-based and it's got little shimmers in it and it's really really runny. It smells like their super fruit extract, which I really like. And again, just I think is a mixture of hyaluronic acid. Let's give this one a go. Yeah, look, it's literally like water. Oh God, oh God. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that. I'm assuming it is. This one smells so nice. Again, it's got a, definitely got a bit of a sticky sort of element to it, which I quite like. Um, however, I think this makes me look a little bit too glowy than I usually go for. I mean, it is supposed to be glass skin, so that's kind of the whole point. I do think my skin looks nice. And then yes, I'm gonna use two primers because this one is completely different. This is like a cream primer. It's the NYX High Glass Face Primer, and this one is in Moonbeam, and it kind of just looks like a liquid highlighter, so 
Maybe I'm about to turn into Tin Man. We'll see. Some of my favourite primers ever are from NYX. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, well, this is what I look like after about eight hours on a regular day. I'm definitely looking very reflective. I'm not a fan. I don't really want to look like I'm sweating all over my face. I'd rather just have a bit of glow here, you know. If you have dry skin though, you might love this. Moving on to my foundation, I've got the Lottie London Velvet Skin Tint Foundation. This one is in the shade Light Medium and I think they have six different shades, supposedly, because it's more of a tint. Each of the different shades covers four different skin tones, apparently. So this is the Light Medium one. Actually, I think maybe there was eight shades. Let me explain. The end of this beauty sponge had gone really weird and hard, but I feel like it still had a lot of use left in it, so I didn't want to throw the whole sponge away. So I just ripped the top off and I'm using the side that's totally fine. <laughs> Don't judge me, okay? It was not, it's time to go. I thought throwing it away would just be a waste. So, um, yeah, for now, this is what we're dealing with. Ooh, uh-uh, oh no, <laughs> oh no. Some of those products that I just put on my face clearly don't like each other and it's doing that thing where it's just balling up. I mean, it's probably because I did just layer like four different products on my skin. I would not describe this shade as a light medium. There were two shades that were lighter than this as well. I would say this is maybe just light. I would not put the word medium in there because it is quite fair. Okay, something, oh God. Oh my days. I'm trying to blend out these little patchy bits, but it's just not. Do you see what I mean here? It's doing that thing where it all kind of like balls up and comes off. When two products don't really like each other's formula, like if one is oil-based and another one is water-based or something similar, they kind of just push away from each other and do this. I'm gonna take this off really quick and come back with just one primer and then the Lottie London thing, because I don't think this is the foundation's fault. I think it's the fault of me putting like three or four products on my skin beforehand. Okay, that time I literally just used the L'Oreal Hyaluronic Acid as my base. And it's gone on perfectly fine, but like medium, it's a no from me. However, the actual finish of the foundation looks really nice. I would say it's got light to medium coverage. It has given me a bit of coverage, but it's definitely got a very fresh finish to it, it doesn't feel too heavy, it feels nice on my skin. I was using this lip mask, which is the Lip Rehab Nourishing Mask from Barry M. It has a really cool applicator. It is quite thick and sticky, but it is a mask, so I'll probably take it off when I do my lipstick. For my concealer, I've got the NYX Born to Glow Radiant Concealer. I was actually a part of the Born to Glow campaign, which was really fun. I got to go and do the photo shoot. But it was kind of awkward because when I got there, um, They'd, Nyx had put me down for being like the lightest shades of this. I was supposed to be part of this photo shoot like representing the fairer skin tone, but no one told me that. So I showed up with fake tan on and then when I got there, they were like, these shades aren't gonna match you. But it was fine, I just used the darker shades. But um, these two that they've sent me are the lighter ones, which are fair and pale. And then they've also sent a contour bronzer shade called Warm Caramel. I think I'm gonna go for fair. It has a little fuzzy applicator, but this one's actually easier to control because you squeeze it yourself rather than doing the annoying like twisty thing. The campaign was actually for the foundation, but they had the concealers there as well, which I also used. It's a very glowy concealer. If you want a really nice bright under eye, this is, I mean, a great concealer for that. That's kind of what it's designed for. To be fair, it does have pretty decent coverage, but I would not use this on my blemishes because I will turn into Casper the Friendly Ghost. Or when I say turn into, I mean, I'm kind of there already. Then on my blemishes, I'm gonna use a little bit of the Revolution uh, Conceal and Define Infinite Concealer. This is in the shade C5.5. Let's try and correct it with a bit of the darker shade. Oh god, I'm, ter I'm actually terrified. Okay, phew. Okay, phew. Oh. oh, thank god. It's blending nicely. It's blending nicely. That actually blended out really nicely as a cream bronzer. Definitely should not have put this on my nose because 
like how am I supposed to blend that why am I using a beauty blender to blend out nose contour like why did I ever think that was a good idea <laughs> I'm not too sure what I just did there but uh I'm just trying to make it match with the rest of my face you know you know what though now that all of that has been done I think my skin actually looks pretty nice just to set my under eyes I'm using a bit of my Rimmel I don't know does anyone remember the name of this something powder that everyone has I'm just using this to set the majority of my face because most of my face actually I'm just gonna set my whole face with <laughs> it because the other powder that I've got to try is again from the NYX High Glass Collection. This is the High Glass Finishing Powder in Light. They do also have two other shades as well. They've got Medium and they've also got Deep. But this to me just looks like a highlighter. Okay, it's definitely giving me some glow. I guess it's kind of like a hybrid between a highlighter and a setting powder. Again, if you have dry skin, I think you might quite like that. It has made my forehead look a little bit textured. Whoa, what is going on with my forehead? Why is it so bumpy? That's actually a very good point. If you do have any kind of bumps on your face or acne or anything, this is probably going to pick up on that. Because my forehead is pretty clear at the moment, but do you see how it's made it look a little bit textured? I'm actually going to use the shade medium as a bit of bronzer because why not? I love a glowy bronzer. Whoa, okay, it's like straight up highlighter. Okay, well that would not be a contour shade, that's for sure. My head is beaming. I guess then for my bronzer, I'm just gonna go in with my Patricia Bright palette from Revolution. Oh shit, that was a lot. <laughs> I always pull an angry face when I'm doing my bronzer to make like my forehead stretch out. Then for my blush, I've got the collection Soft Glow Blusher in Shocking. I'm guessing because it's pretty shocking pink. Oh, okay. It's not as pigmented as I thought it was going to be. I was kind of scared to dip in there. Hello. That's also quite a glowy blush. Is everything that I'm testing today just full of shimmer? It's not super pigmented and I would rather go for a more peachy kind of blush. I think this is a bit too just straight up pink for me. I like a nice balance between not too pigmented, but also pigmented enough that I don't have to like do this over and over again. For my highlight, I've got again, two different glass skin highlighters. Apparently that's the thing at the moment. I've got the NYX High Glass Illuminating Powder in Moon Glow, and I've got the Revolution Glass Crystal Illuminator in Glass Crystal. <laughs> Packaging for the Revolution one is so sick. Look at it, it's like a little ice thing. This one has a mirror, which I really like. Oh my God, I've just realized that looks exactly like the Fenty Beauty one. Revolution, I see you. Ooh, that's like straight up white. Let's try one of each on each cheek. To make things fair, I'm going to use two different highlighter brushes. This next one looks gorgeous and it's kind of squidgy. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Got some on my brush. Okay, well it's really intense and really nice. However, I would say that this is definitely a cream highlighter, which I didn't actually realise before. It is really nice, but you really have to like work it in there with your brush. Then for the Revolution one, Let's go in with this on the other side. Oh wow. That is just straight up silver. This one is a little bit more chunky. It looks a bit like glittery, but that, oh, that is actually really nice. I mean, they're both nice highlighters. They're just very different to each other. Whoa, that is so pretty. For my eyebrows, I've got the Rimmel London Micro Pre Brow, I can't read. Brow Pro Micro 24 hour precision stroke pen. This is in the shade soft brown and it's an actual felt tip for your eyebrows. Oh, that's quite dark and quite permanent apparently. <laughs> Jesus, you have to have a steady hand. I think I messed up the front of it a bit because I tried drawing in hairs. Every single brow pen, because I do my foundation before my eyebrows, it gets all clogged up with foundation and powder and then stops working. But I always do my foundation first, which every single brow pen seems to not like. Every single brow pen that I've tried does the same thing. So I'm just smushing it onto my hand and then picking some product up. Although it does stay pretty well though, because look, I'm trying to rub that off my hand. It's not coming off very easily. Definitely not the best brows I've ever done. I tried drawing in some little hair strokes, but it was pretty fiddly. It was pretty tricky, to be honest. You have to have a pretty steady hand. They're not bad though. The color's nice. For my eyeshadow, I've got two palettes from LA Girl Pro. This is the Mastery eyeshadow palette. Lots of beautiful neutral slash 
I would say pinky sort of tones. However, the one that I'm gonna use is the Artistry palette, which looks like this. They have a massive mirror, which I like, and um, this one looks like this, so it's more earthy sort of tones. This is a type of palette that I would actually use. Also, this shade is broken, so I need to be really, really careful. But this is the type of palette that I would use, because you've got your two rows of neutral shades. You've got a matte dark brown, you've got matte transition shades, you've got an inner corner highlight, you've got gold lid shades, you've got a black. I might actually go for something neutral today because the past couple of weeks I have been going a little bit out there with my eyeshadow looks. So I'm gonna start off with this shade up here. Although I don't actually think that's gonna do it. Okay, that's the exact same color as my skin tone. Never mind. I'm gonna use the one underneath it. That shade is pretty light. I'm gonna take the shade next to it, which is a slightly cooler toned brown, and I'm just gonna build the colors to go slightly darker and darker, if you see what I mean. So I'm just adding this brown. They are quite light, they look darker in the pan. I'm gonna wing it out slightly. I was watching Jordan's video yesterday, Jordan Lipscomb, and she did this really gorgeous soft glam sort of thing. Yeah, to be honest, I did expect these colors to be a bit darker and a bit more pigmented. I mean, they're nice, they're blending nicely, but you know, I just, I want it to pack a bit more of a punch. I'm gonna try and do a smoky liner today, I think. Let's take some of this dark brown color here and hope that this one's a bit darker than the others. Oh, yep, it is. Is it me or did most of that just disappear? They don't seem to be layering that well over the top of each other. I'm trying to pack down some of that shade, but it's just disappearing. Can you see that? Like. What? <laughs> I'm so confused. Where did it go? It's kind of just getting stuck in my crease and calling it a day. Right. I'm gonna try dipping into the black and creating a wing with it. But I'm doing quite a high angled wing because I've seen people do this to make their eyes look more cat shape. Okay, that is not working for my eye shape. I am gonna smoke this out in a sec, by the way. Again, it's literally just coming off as I'm trying to put more on. Let me try a different brush, just in case it's that. Same black eyeshadow. Yeah, it's still doing the same thing. It's like no more eyeshadow can get on there because it's just wiping itself off. Let's use a little smoking brush and try and blend that out. Why is this one just stuck in a clump? I was so ready to love this eyeshadow palette, but I'm just, I'm just not. I'm gonna go in with the medium brown just along my lower lash line. I'm gonna dip back into some of the dark brown. It's all just stuck on this side and then the rest of the eyeshadow has disappeared. <laughs> well, this is a mess. Nope, that was a bad idea. I give up. I guess while we're here, we'll at least test the shimmers. So I'm gonna go in with this shade here. Okay, that is such a shame because these shimmers are amazing. Look at that. Oh, why did the rest of the palette have to let me down? That shimmer is stunning. It's really nice. I'm gonna take the shade next to it, the lighter gold. I'm gonna put some of that on the very inner part. Yeah, okay, what the hell, these shimmers are so nice. I'm gonna attempt to go back in with a bit more of the browns and just blend this into more of a standard eyeshadow look. I don't know if it's just me, but I just could not get those to blend nicely. On my inner corners, I'm taking this shimmery white sort of colour, which again is nice. Then for my eyeliner, I've got the Rimmel Wonder Ink Eyeliner, and it's got a nice pointy point. Ooh, that's very black and very liquidy. There's no drag at all with that. kind of want to try a new eyeliner shape, but I'm also kind of scared that it will look ridiculous. I mean, it worked on this eye, but this eye's just gone really droopy. It's fine when I do this, but as soon as I do that, it's just like not, <laughs> not happening. For my mascara, I've got the Rimmel Scandal Eyes Volume On Demand Mascara, which is huge packaging. But the pictures for this looked very promising, so I'm hoping this is gonna deliver. The brush looks pretty decent. Oh my gosh. The pictures for this campaign made it look amazing. Are you kidding me? That has just given me the lightest coat of mascara. Hopefully it's buildable. Come on, let's get some volume. <laughs> well, this was definitely falsely advertised. It's actually just doing nothing for volume. There is no volume there. I mean, I'll give it that. It's definitely buildable, but it's still not anywhere near the level of the 
campaign. I'll be back in like 10 minutes once I've built this up. Why are there birds tweeting outside? It's four in the afternoon. I think they're a bit confused. Mascara I have managed to build up but it's taken me about seven or eight coats to build it up to this and no one has time for that. Finally we move on to the lips. There's so much in me that really 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 wants to just do a nude lip right now. I have got all of the shades of the Revlon Super Lustrous Matte lipsticks which are new and I will just say me and Emma did film a brand campaign with them the other day for these lipsticks which is going up on our Instagram very soon however this is not sponsored by Revlon they've got no idea that I'm including the lipsticks in this video I just thought because these are new at the drugstore and I haven't actually tested them on my channel that I would do that but they are gorgeous they're such a nice formula I was wearing this nude one the other day which is in the shade 011 which is so pretty and I just want to put this on but we discovered such a nice red it is the shade 007 on fire look at this red color it is stunning and oh my god the formula of these as you can see they're super pigmented but they're really lightweight it literally feels like i've got nothing on my lips and they're matte but they're not uncomfortable is that not just such a gorgeous color so this is the finished look overall hopefully you can see the lipstick super super lightweight but so pigmented et voila what do you guys think let me know down below what was your favorite product right i am gonna answer a question of the day if you guys have got any other questions for me let me don't let me know down below with the question with the hashtag <laughs> am i all right with the hashtag question of the day today's question comes from caitlin chapman and she says question of the day do you change your mascara every three months i was told you're supposed to to prevent eyelash mites first of all I absolutely do not do that. I've got mascaras that are three years old and I still use them occasionally. Most of my mascaras at the moment are definitely over six months old and I find them totally fine and my eyes don't get irritated. Second of all, what are eyelash mites? And do I even want to know? Ooh. Okay, they look gross. It says eyelash mites may spread from contact with others who have them. This can be a result of having close contact with someone who else who has a mite infestation in their eyelashes or skin. Well, I mean, I use my mascaras from like a year ago and I don't have eyelash mites, so. But according to Google, you can only get them from someone else that's got them, so. So I'm guessing you can't just get them from old mascaras? I've got no idea. I'm not a doctor, but um, I don't follow the three month rule. Right, I'm gonna leave this here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. I'm sorry this video was so long. It's literally taken me like, two hours to film but i hope you guys are all having a lovely week well it's only monday <laughs> i hope you have a good week and i will see you in my next video bye